It's my opinion that at the moment you'd be serving this department best by working with me in public relations. Well, opinions are like assholes. Everybody has one. Hey everyone, Scooby-Doo here and welcome to a general discussion video. Uh, apologize if you're tuning in to watch a diorama build or something else, but um, I don't know, today I felt like just doing a general discussion on other YouTube channels and uh, where I see things going as far as the uh, collector world goes in regards to Star Wars or really anything else. Uh, as you can see here, this is an R2-D2. Uh, it's an interactive one. And I'll turn it on really quickly just for a second. Get them going here. Hey, R2. Hey, R2. Do you remember Princess Leia? All right, really fun. All right, fantastic. Um... Really cool item. Um, if you noticed here, there's a little red light. This is a uh, what's called a safety mode. I'm gonna go ahead and turn them back off. Where's the switch? Um, that safety mode allows you to uh, have him up on a shelf or on a table, and you can still do interactive things with them. You can also turn the safety mode off and you can sit him on the uh, floor and he'll move around and play different games and be interactive in other ways. But uh, it does have that feature in it. And I wonder why other items aren't made the same way and why people don't bring those up. Uh, if you look right here to your right, you'll see the Spin Master Yoda. They came out last year that was kind of an epic fell considering that you can purchase these much cheaper now than they sold for last year which is kind of an indication that it's not that great of an item because generally as you know Star Wars stuff goes up in value not down in value. Uh, with this uh, Spin Master Yoda they didn't put a safety mode or a shelf mode on there. They have one mode it's interactive just like the R2 is, uh, but the only mode it has is to put it on the floor, which I think was one of the reasons why it didn't do very well. Now, when they originally brought out the Yoda um, and they showed it at Comic-Con and at places and conventions and whatnot, uh, they, always, they always showed him on a table and people loved it. However, when you actually receive it, it'll tell you in the instructions, do not place it on a table. It's meant for the floor only. And the thing with that is, is I wonder why, why they were in development and why they were showing the prototypes. Nobody, nobody ever mentioned like, hey, why does this not have a shelf mode? Why does this not have a display mode? And my answer to that is, I think... A lot of us, well not me, but a lot of collectors uh, just take what they're given. Uh, they don't voice their opinions on stuff. Or they don't, vote, they don't voice them enough uh, to where you end up getting something that you really want. Um, same thing over here with the DX line. The DX line by Hot Toys. Um, one of the first... Uh, figures that I purchased and when I started to getting n not these figures just the, I'm talking about the box um, I thought all figures came like that and really nice presentation boxes you get a bunch of extra items with them uh, really high quality um, but they didn't continue to make that line now they just come out with regular boxes and again you just get what you get and there doesn't seem to be much of a uprising by the collector world to say, hey, look, you know what? We want the DX line back. We want to feel like we're getting something. Because if you look at things that you get uh, or that people collect or they're made as a collector item, uh, like plates or coins or anything, they're, 
they're like individually numbered and they come in special packaging and all this stuff and they're not two to three hundred dollars like these things are but yet you really feel like you're getting something whereas now a lot of the hot toys and sideshow and stuff like that you're just getting them in regular boxes um, they don't come with any extra items and if they do come with extra items it's only because it's an exclusive that you had to purchase at one particular website which is ridiculous if you're paying two to three hundred dollars for the item it should have everything it should come with but again uh, it doesn't seem like it bothers people it doesn't bother you that you're not getting the high quality that you used to get even though you're paying more for the items um, and I've talked about this a thousand times, I think. The FX lightsaber. Cool item. Again, no display mode. Now, I understand that you might want to use it for cosplay or use it for a Halloween costume and or wave it around in the air a bunch of times. Uh, but that's not year-round. You're not going to do that every single day. But you will be displaying this every day. And again, you can watch up to 100 reviews on these FX lightsabers, and they'll talk about the weight and how screen accurate they are. Uh, they might mention that it doesn't have a volume control, but other than that, they don't mention that you can't actually display them being on. Why is that? Does nobody want to have these lights uh, in their room? I do know that they make a cheaper version, like a $20 or $30 version, which is actually like an, uh, it's kind of like a nightlight. You can either turn it on and your room will glow in blue or red or whatever color. And it'll either turn off after 15 minutes or it'll just turn off when you turn it off. So they got it for a $20 item. They got it. But this $200 FX, they thought not to give a volume control. They thought not to give a display mode. They just made it the way they made it, and you have everybody reviewing it saying that they love it. So why would they need to change it? They don't need to. Then comes these items, which really gets me. Now, I'm watching this other YouTube channel, and this person has over 200,000 subscribers. Over 200,000. I have 300. Now, I do get paid for my channel, and I get paid maybe... I don't know, I make like 10 bucks a month. So you can imagine how much somebody that has 200,000 subscribers, how much they make a month. And the thing is, is he's not even doing the channel for you. Yeah, he does the reviews and yeah, you learn some stuff about the item, but he's not actually doing it for you. He's doing it to make money. And a really good example of that is the Iron Man. Now this Iron Man here just has one switch on it. It's not that bad. You do have to take off his back plate. Uh, let's see, I still have to fidget around to find the switch. Hold on, here we see. Here we go. See, I shouldn't even have to do that, but there you go. It's one switch. And there's your Iron Man. That's an iconic look for the Iron Man. I had to do one switch. But some of the other ones that are coming out, you have to do two, three, up to four switches, take apart his helmet, take apart his armor. Switch everything on, put the armor back on for him to be displayed like this. And then when you're done looking at him, you got to take the armor back off, turn off all the switches again to have it back the way it was. And not to mention, you probably have to move him around and you might have had him in a pose that maybe you really liked and now and you got to repose him again. However, this one here, the C-3PO, you just touch the back of his head and he comes on. No switches, no nothing. If you want to turn them off, you just touch it again. Now, why is that 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 one is made correctly and the Iron Man is not? And why is it that that person, when he did his review four months ago, made no mention of that? Didn't say like, you know what, why aren't they making it where you could just turn it on and off with one swipe of your finger? Well, I'll tell you why. I mean, he's getting his figures for free, and he's basically the voice of Hot Toys and Sideshow, and he's not your voice at all, yet you're subscribing to his channel, and he's doing nothing for you. He's actually keeping you in the dark ages by never complaining or saying what's wrong with these items. 
So there's no need for Sideshow or Hot Toys to change. And what's even worse is if you look at his videos, you can watch his comments down below. There's hundreds and hundreds of comments. And all they're talking about is, wow, I can't wait to get that figure. Oh, I got mine on pre-order. Nobody's saying, hey, that's bullshit that you have to turn all the switches on and take his armor on and off. So I guess I'm one of the few channels that are actually going to point all these things out to you because in my channel I actually try to help my viewers. Mostly with just building dioramas and telling you how easy it is to do and if you have any questions or comments regarding anything that you see on my videos. So, yeah, it's just, you know, I was going to do a rant on this and I decided just to talk normal. Uh, because this is just ridiculous. It's ridiculous that you have all these different things. You have the R2, which is made correctly. And then you have the Spin Master that's not. And again, with all those reviews, when, when it came out, nobody, nobody, you can go through every single review except for mine, where somebody said, why doesn't this have a display mode? Well, it doesn't have one because nobody wants to speak up about it. Why doesn't the Iron Man have the switch or the touch on the back? Or why didn't that Darth Vader? Or why didn't the FX turn on and off? Or, I mean, why doesn't it have a display mode? Don't I just want to have a light on, maybe? And the one person that could be your voice, the one person that actually has the ear of the manufacturers, has the ear of Hot Toys or Sideshow, all he is is a yes man. All he is is going to continue to say how great all the product is and nothing's going to change. Just imagine if I had 200,000 subscribers, we would have an Iron Man that was touch on and off. We would have a lightsaber now that just stayed on. Spin Master would have remade this again with the display mode because they can't afford to have that many people listening to a crazy man like me pointing out all the different things that are wrong with the items. The Imperial uh, Probe droid that came out from Sideshow last year. Why didn't that have a, a motion sensor on it? it? It made no sense. The, the top of the droid is, was completely hollow inside. They could have put a sensor in any one of the eyes that are on the probe, and then when you had it on... If you had it on display, you walk past it, it would light up and stuff, and that would actually would have been cool. But again, nobody brought that up. So if they don't bring it up, they're not going to change it. Now Sideshow is increasing their prices on their figures, making things exclusive where you can only buy it at their website. And again, nobody's going to end up saying anything. So I hope my video, although maybe long, hope it was a little bit informational to you. So don't always just take the word of one particular channel and to voice your opinion on stuff. If you want a Jedi Luke, which I had to make one. I mean, Sideshow made one years ago. Metacom made one years ago. But the technology for making figures now have changed so much that it's time to make a new one. It should have been made a year ago, two years ago. But there's no Jedi Lukes. Why is that? I don't know. All right, so this is the end of my somewhat of a rant, but not just informational video. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below. I do have some diorama videos coming up next week, so if that's what you tuned in for, uh, they'll be on next week. So uh, I hope you guys are having a fantastic day, and I shall talk to you guys later.